Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator and sunscreen fanatic, and today we're gonna to be talking about sunscreen, but more specifically, how much sunscreen you are supposed to wear. One of the questions I get a lot is, how do you know how much sunscreen it is you're supposed to apply in order to get the advertised protection on the packaging? I always talk about my quarter teaspoon and how that's generally a good rule I use for my face, neck, and ears. You see people talk about two to three fingers length worth. You hear this two milligrams per centimeter squared, and then how I apply that to my sunscreen application every day. But before we get into it, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe button notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give you a thumbs up and down below in the comments tell me what method do you find really useful on a daily basis? Do you go as in-depth as I do with sunscreen application? And also what are some of your favorite sunscreens to apply on a daily basis? Sound off. So first thing I want to say is this is not an original idea. I'm in no way reinventing the wheel. The way I learned about this was actually from a fellow cosmetic formulator named Stephen Co, aka Kind of Stephen on Instagram. He posted an IGTV a while back really explaining his method and his way of going about it. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. He explained it in a really nice way. And so I'm gonna link that down below. But realistically, what it involves is just measuring your face, doing some math. You will have to do some math, but I'll kind of walk you through how I did it with my specific measurements so that that way you can replicate it yourself. And you will potentially need a scale, but we'll get into that in a bit. I wanna first explain the methodology behind the numbers, the figures and measuring and why applying a specific amount matters. Well, when you look at your sunscreen packaging, you see on the front of the packaging, it gives you an SPF value. And that SPF value is basically deduced through a series of tests. What they do is that they apply sunscreen to an exposed area. Generally, it's done on people's back just because you can get a fairly even layer of skin for that. You have a control that has no sunscreen applied to it. And then you have the part that does have sunscreen applied to it and you expose that to UV light. And then you basically see how long it takes for erythema to happen on the skin, which means basically redness to happen, sunburn. You take these tests, replicate the results over and over again, get a mean average, and that's the the SPF value of the sunscreen. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the amount that's used? Well, it was decided that a realistic amount that was easily replicable, therefore you're able to recreate the experiment, the conditions of the SPF testing was two milligrams per centimeter squared. And so that's where that industry standard come from. They wanted a number that was consistent, therefore every test had a specific value that could be repeated over and over and over again. And that's essentially the industry standard. And so it's important to know that this is the basis where the SPF values on the packaging are derived from, just because as I always say, if you don't put on enough sunscreen, you're not getting the SPF value that's advertised. And therefore you're essentially just wasting your money on your sunscreen. And so with that, it's important to note that the amount of sunscreen that you're putting on is fairly equal to the amount of protection you're getting. There have been experiments done that showcase that people don't put on enough sunscreen and therefore aren't getting the proper protection. In some of these experiments, the results are a little bit more linear in that wearing half the amount of sunscreen you're supposed to gives you about half the SPF. Put on a quarter of the amount, you get a quarter of the SPF. Others aren't so linear, but we know for a fact, you don't put on enough, you're not getting adequate protection that's advertised on the packaging. Conversely, you put on more sunscreen, an excess of two milligrams per centimeter squared, there is a strong likelihood that you are in fact increasing the protection that you're getting. And I've spoken on this in a few videos. I have resources linked below in the description box if you want a little bit more to see behind the scenes as to what happened with these experiments. But essentially putting on an excess amount of sunscreen is not only ensuring that you are for sure gonna get that very even, uninterrupted, uniform layer of protection on the skin. That film is really important to ensure proper sunscreen protection, but you're essentially also putting more UV filters topically on your skin that are able to then do more of the UV absorption work that is important in sunscreen function. And the tea is I pretty much only recommend this being done with chemical sunscreens. With physical sunscreens, it's just not a very feasible reality for most people, just because the formulas tend to be either inelegant, heavy, or white casty. We're very familiar with that. And so I only really recommend this for chemical sunscreens. And that's why I first brought this up with the Pareto situation, just because that's a sunscreen that was really, really famous, just because it was such an elegant sunscreen option. And while the reality of the testing has brought the actual SPF of that product down to about an SPF, of 30, putting on an excess amount of a really elegant sunscreen does elevate the protection that you're getting. Inconsistently, it's anywhere between double to quadruple the protection. Again, the sources for this are gonna be down below. Also, that's not the most concrete, but it's definitely something that's very promising. Whereas for something that's very rich and very white casty, we all know those kind of sunscreens, it's just not gonna feel good or look good on the skin. And so let's get to the two slash three finger rule and why I don't think it's the most consistent practice for measuring out your sunscreen. First and foremost, People got different size hands, people got different size faces, people got big heads, people got tiny hands. And so when it comes to those variables of your faces and your hands and your fingers being very different sizes and lengths, that in itself is already an inconsistency where you don't know if you're putting on too much, not enough. Too much isn't always a problem, but still. Another issue that's coupled along with that is the fact that sunscreens, first and foremost, have varying densities. It's not a very uniform density, and you have sunscreens that are gonna be very thick, very creamy, more heavy. You're also gonna have sunscreens that are gonna be very, very 
very light, milky, and very runny. Not only that, but the openings on sunscreen packaging are very different as well. So on one finger, you can end up with a very, very thick slab of sunscreen, while on the other hand, you're gonna have a finger that has like a very thin stream of a very lightweight sunscreen, for example. You have something like the Self Reflect from Kinship, and this one, while having a smaller opening, is a more creamy, more rich textured sunscreen. And you can see that's what it looks like on one finger. You also have the Aqua Witch Watery Essence from Biore. And this one is a very lightweight gel sunscreen. This one has a very large opening. And on another finger, it looks like this. Then you have something like the Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Gel, which is a pump. And therefore how to do a pump on a finger is a whole different story. But also it's a very runny texture that is very lightweight. So you can see the experience behind all three of these is very different and therefore how do you apply that consistently to all different sunscreens? And beyond just that inconsistency, you also have the fact that with the quarter teaspoon rule, they're gonna take up a different amount of space in that one quarter teaspoon and therefore what you're gonna be able to apply to your face is also inconsistent as well. And so all that aside, I'm going to explain to you now how I went about measuring my face to get the surface area to then convert that to know how much sunscreen it is I needed to apply so that I can weigh that and know what the proper amount is. So for this, what you're gonna need is a tape measurer. This one is one of those really flexible tape ones. You could also use a piece of string if all you have is a ruler or a more rigid tape measurer. But regardless, you're gonna need something that's gonna be able to conform to the contours of your face. Also no, it needs to be able to measure in centimeters just because centimeter squared. Also, you're going to need a little scale. I know this is a little bit extra, but realistically, this is about weight. It's as small, as compact, as cheap. I got this with a little chemistry kit I needed for a class a few years back. What's important to note is that you need to be able to measure up to the tenths or even hundredths place. So just note that is actually kind of a requirement. And then if you really want to be able to see what that weight translates to in a quarter teaspoon, for example, you're gonna need a quarter teaspoon, which I get questions on that a lot. I use a quarter teaspoon. If you wanna do the most, I would also say maybe get an eighth teaspoon, just because, spoiler alert, I know that's about how much that I need for my face most days with most sunscreens. Let's measure. So the T with this is you wanna measure the length of your face as well as the width of your face. What I will also note is that this isn't the most exact science still. I don't got a machine that's gonna be able to tell me the most accurate surface area. So just note, this is still a guesstimate, although it's definitely a more accurate guesstimate. So what we're gonna do is measure the length and width of our face with the tape measure. So I'm going the length of it, I got 21 centimeters. The width of it, I have 23. And with each of those, you're actually gonna be taking half of those amounts because what you really want is just the radius of each length and width. Multiply those by each other. Multiply that by pi. And that's gonna give you roughly the surface area of your face. Mine is about 380 centimeters squared. And so with that value centimeter squared, you know that you need two milligrams per centimeter squared. So what you're gonna do is multiply this by two. And that gives me roughly 758 milligrams milligrams. I just round up to 800 to make it a little bit easier and it means a little bit more. So now I have 800 milligrams and then what you want to do is convert that to grams just because my scale only reads grams. I don't think it reads in milligrams. Divide that by a thousand. So what I get is 0 0.8 grams. That's how much sunscreen I need for my face. And so in Steven's video, he just uses a sheet mask that he feels conforms very nicely to his face. Therefore, he feels that that gives him a fairly accurate surface area to work off of. I just straight up measured my face. You can do whatever you find easiest, but this is how I went about it. And you can see a scale was very necessary. In his video, Steven also explains how to convert that milligrams per centimeter squared into actual volume. And that was a little bit more intensive for me, but I just say, if you have a scale and it's something small like this, you can just have in your bathroom or have at your vanity when you get ready. It does make it a little bit easier. I do still weigh everything out in my little quarter teaspoon though. So that way I have like a little vessel for my sunscreen. That also just quantifies for the face. I've taken that amount and done the whole finger method and done the teaspoon method in my Pareto video. And I know for Pareto specifically, one finger length is about approximately the same amount I need for my face. And that scooped into a quarter teaspoon fills up half that quarter teaspoon, which equals an eighth of a teaspoon. What I basically do is double that value to account for my ears and the front of my neck and or back of the neck. I'll go generally a little bit extra if I'm doing the back of the neck. Sometimes though, I do use a separate sunscreen for the back of my neck and my arms and whatnot. So that's why I generally stick to that quarter teaspoon rule, just because I know that will cover my face, my ears, and most of my neck. And that way it's a generally very consistent value. When it 
comes to how I review my sunscreens, I generally do factor in the fact that these sunscreens have different densities, different textures, different weights to them. And so I usually off camera generally weigh it just to kind of see visually what it looks like in my teaspoon on the fingers and whatnot. So I get a general sense. For the most part, there is a very consistent value metric with sunscreen. I'm not saying it's a super varying medium, but what I will say is that no sunscreen is 100% exactly the same. And therefore I do like to verify every sunscreen I try just to make sure the values are consistent and that I'm putting on an adequate amount for the sake of the review and for the protection value. Overall, I don't think it's the most complicated thing. I did the math up on the screen with you. So therefore it's hopefully easier to follow for you personally. One of these little scales isn't gonna cost you a lot of money. I think it's a very useful resource if you are into sunscreen that kind of way. What I have done though is knowing how much sunscreen, for example, goes into a quarter teaspoon and weighing that out. I have then gone and done the finger method to see, let me put enough sunscreen on one finger. What does that measure out to? two fingers are the measure out too. So that way I know if I have to resort to the finger method for a specific holy grail sunscreen, I can guesstimate and have a very good idea of what is an adequate amount. And that's why I know for a fact when people start going up into the three finger method for just their face, I'm like, that is excessive. Even for just the neck and face as well, that starts to get into that little bit of the excess sunscreen situation where when people say, well, the sunscreen didn't work for me, I'm like, well, you're probably just putting on too much and it's not the right texture, right formulation or right filters for your skin tone. Go check out Kind of Steven's video if you want the full tea and his explanation behind it. I'll have the link down below in the description box. Also, my friend Capricornian Skin on Instagram does have a very similar video explaining the same topic if you want his perspective. Also, Michelle Wong, aka Labma from Beauty Science, does also have a plethora of videos about this and she does explain this in her videos as well. But yeah, that's the full tea and the behind the scenes scoop on how to find out how much sunscreen you really need for your face. If you have any questions or you need help walking through the explanation of these things, leave those down in the comments section. I do love to read your comments, engage with you guys, have a little chit chat about sunscreen. That really is the highlight of my week. Also down below in the comments, tell me, do you have a specific hack that you use that you found is really helpful to measure out the proper amount of sunscreen? Tell me those tips down below as well. Also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.